Russian war correspondents complain that the Russian army now has to storm its own fortifications in the Kursk region, which were built to repel attacks from Ukraine. However, these positions were surrendered without a fight, and now Ukrainian soldiers are stationed at Russian facilities. This is what Russian military propagandist Roman Alekhine writes, publishing the, the words of one of the soldiers of the Russian Z Army. According to him, the Russians come up against the settlement of Darino and were unable to quickly pass through since there is a large stronghold nearby. It is here that there are several kilometers of fortifications underground which are practically impossible to take head on. A similar situation is in Plekovo, where for several days now, we have not been able to pass through the fortifications that were once built for our troops and which were occupied by enemy troops, writes the Russian Z war correspondent. He also claims that during the offensive, the Ukrainian military managed to successfully disrupt Russian communications, which forced Russian army soldiers to abandon their positions and flee, leaving their fortifications without a fight. This led to panic among the Russian military. Alikhine writes, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has acknowledged that Ukrainian troops are engaged in a fierce battle with Russian forces trying to take back territory in the Kursk region in western Russia. Russia announced that more than 110,000 people have been evacuated from the border region of Kursk in response to Ukraine's offensive, which has been ongoing since August. Tatyana Moskalkova, the Russian Commissioner for Human Rights, stated that a total of 112,337 individuals were evacuated from the Kursk region. She noted that just over 12,000 residents are currently in temporary accommodation centers, while more than 100,000 have sought refuge with relatives and friends. Moskalkova added that approximately 40,000 people either declined to evacuate or have returned to their homes. Additionally, she reported that 30,415 individuals, including 7,600 children, are housed in 960 temporary centers across 65 regions of Russia, many of whom fled shelling in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions two years ago. The incursion into the Kursk region by Ukrainian forces began on the night of August the 5th to the 6th, when they entered near the town of Sudza, located about 10 kilometers from the border. The Russian invading troops are exhausted and exhausted by constant meat assaults. The president of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, is actively trying to find additional life force, but everything is not so simple. The Russian army is facing significant losses and a lack of human resources due to the long war against Ukraine. Newsweek editors draw attention to the fact that during the two and a half year war against Ukraine, the aggressor country of the Russian Federation lost more than 665,000 of its soldiers. What is important to understand is that more than a thousand Russian occupiers die or are injured every day. Despite this, official Moscow has never acknowledged its huge losses. Accurate data on casualties on the battlefield is difficult to verify. However, according to the British government, Russian losses are approaching 648,000. William Freer, a researcher at the British Center for Geostrategy, notes that both Russia and Ukraine face a shortage of human resources. According to him, after ammunition, the most important factor in war is the search for new manpower. It is also important to understand that it was in September 2024 that the aggressor countries suffered the greatest losses during the entire war. The Russian president is forced to actively look for new ways to replenish his occupation army despite the fact that right now his reputation is on the verge. Putin hopes to make voluntary military service more attractive, while he does not reject unpopular options such as sending conscripts to Ukraine or announcing a new wave of mobilization. Russia uses several resources for military recruitment. These are regular conscripts, contract workers, reservists, as well as mercenaries, such as the fighters of the Wagner Group and foreigners who joined the war in exchange for high salaries and citizenship, Newsweek said. What is important to understand is that it is mobilization that is currently a controversial issue for Putin because a significant number of men of conscription age have left the country to avoid service. This did not prevent the Kremlin from introducing new rules allowing electronic subpoenas to be sent to Russians. However, the problem of lack of manpower is still relevant for the aggressor country.
The Iranian regime and the Kremlin continue to increase cooperation in the space sector. Tehran sent two of its satellites to Russia for the latter to launch them into orbit using its spacecraft. We are talking about the satellites Kausar and Hodod. The Iranian side claims that the first satellite is intended for use in agriculture and environmental monitoring. The second satellite is designed for satellite communications. This is not the first time that Russia has launched Iranian satellites into space. U.S. authorities have expressed concern about the growing cooperation between Tehran and Moscow in the space sector. It is possible that the satellites being launched could be used for military purposes. It is noteworthy that the current transfer of Iranian satellites to Russia is taking place against the backdrop of the escalating situation in the Middle East. Potentially, these satellites could be used by Iran to track military targets in, in Israel. Moreover, Russia itself could use the satellites in the war against Ukraine. Russia has already sent Iranian satellites into orbit in February 2024 and 2022. At the same time, the United States was concerned about space cooperation between Russia and Iran. Washington feared that the satellites would help Russia in its war against Ukraine and allow Iran to track potential military targets in Israel and the Middle East. Iran is perhaps Russia's largest military partner. Tehran has provided Moscow with Shahed-type kamikaze drones and technologies for their production. Iran has also provided Russia with ballistic missiles. Western media speculated that the Russian regime had given Iran military aircraft in return. Western partners fear that Moscow may share nuclear technology and resources for weapons production with Tehran. According to The Telegraph, Iran believes that Russia owes it for weapons supplies. As previously reported, Iran requested Russia's help in conducting satellite reconnaissance in anticipation of a possible strike by Israel. As is known, Israel promised to respond to the large-scale missile attack on Israeli territory by Iran carried out on October the 1st.